Hi and welcome back to the Glory Days. This is episode 32. In this episode we are about to take on Bayern in our Champions Cup semi-final. We've had a really good run in the Champions Cup this season. We knocked out Barcelona in the quarterfinals, pretty convincingly, beating them 6-1 overall. They're currently a shadow of them former selves. In the round before that we dispatched all Borussia Dortmund with a 3-1 aggregate victory. This is the second German side we'll face in these knockout rounds and I was more anxious about the Dortmund games because those felt like winnable. Bayern on the other hand could be a level above us and just a bit out of our reach at the moment. We're also suffering a little bit from injuries with Gonzalez now out for three weeks on top of Milenkovic who's out for another two to three weeks. Baragi struggling for fitness and Polgar also struggling for fitness. So we're by no means full strength going into this Bayern game. So I'm eager to find out how we get on. If you're looking forward to this video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and let's get started. Bayern were the team who knocked us out in the knockout rounds last season. We didn't get embarrassed, but they were definitely a level above us. These two teams also met back in 2009-2010 in round of 16. Fiorentina won one leg 3-2 but were then beaten by Bayern 2-1. They also met back in 2008-2009 where that was a group stage. Fiorentina got a draw 1-1 but were also beaten 3-0 by Bayern quite conclusively. In that game the goal scorers were Zeroberto, Schweinsteiger and Klose. And Mutu was in the Fiorentina squad back then. You can see he were definitely a weakened team. And the squad that we're going to go with the Dragovsky in goal, Igor, Tadebo, Nefum and Audrey Zolo. Kutmenas, Kostrovli and Zaracho. Trincao, Origi and Vlavic up front. Trincao is also struggling a little bit for fitness. We've got this first leg at home. So you can see our form has not exactly been at its best. We've got three wins, two draws. Bayern Munich also got two draws in their last five. But here we go, it's kicked off and fingers crossed for a much better showing than we had last time. We In the second leg we performed pretty well. We can see that actually... Bayern's not having the best of games so far to begin with in these first 20 minutes. But they've got an opportunity here with Goretzka. Plays it in Muller. Picked up by Trincao. Beautiful ball over to Vlaovic who gets in behind the goalkeeper but hits the post. That shows how deadly we can be on that counter attack. We're really pressing him high at the moment. Working hard. Trincao comes down into the box. Plays it Vlaovic again but Vlaovic's shooting boots aren't on at the moment. Goalkeeper got a touch and hits the post. Trincao in and Vlaovic heads over the bar. Three opportunities so far. We're proven that we can give them a game. But if we don't take one of these chances soon, we're going to regret it. At this level, you really got to take your chances. Debo to Cook Miners, who plays another good ball over there, but headed back to the goalkeeper, Noor. It looks like Byron just trying to slow this game down a little bit. Paying at rocket speed here. Zaracho comes forward. Through Vlavic again. This time he goes to shoot from well outside the box. And again, that's the third time he's hit the post today. And this corner comes in for Byron. And they almost get it headed into the back of the net just wide from Muller. We have controlled this game, but with limb shots, you really need to take one of those chances. We'll head them back out, but it's Bayern who've got this free kick. It's cleared by Nefum, who's a big towering defender. Kutmeners runs forward to Vlavic, tries to play to Origi, but it's a poor ball. And it gives Bayern a chance to pick it up, slow the pace down a little bit, and get a few touches on the ball. All the way out to this left-hand side with Nabry, Goretzka. But we pick it up again. Down to Origi on this left hand side for a change. He has to turn back on himself. Gets it into Vlavic. But again Vlavic really should do a little bit better there. I think we need some sort of inspiration. Amada's already proved that he can be the difference on occasion. So we are going to give him his chance. This is a big stage for him to show at. And we'll head back out here. We do have a corner. Kostrovli gets it in. Nephilim this time from the near post. far as a header into the back of the net. Goalkeeper could do nothing about it. We do lead 1-0. I'd love to see us get another goal. Perhaps some open play would be nice. But it's been a very tight game considering how many opportunities we've had. 75 minutes gone. We look like we're tiring a little bit. I want to bring on some fresh legs. Make sure that we don't dip here. Don't have many options because of all the injuries. So we are going to just freshen up that central midfield. Hope that that extra energy in there to battle means that we keep up this performance. Audrey's all down this right hand side now, but it's headed clear. Back to Almada. He tries a shot, but it's blocked off the defender. Out to Igor now. Back to Zaracho. Inside the Bayern box. Igor has a chance now. He plays a lovely little cross in. Trincao was there at the back post. And we go 2-0 up against Bayern. This is absolutely huge for us. This could be 
Depending on how results go and we go away, if we can keep it tight away and we are good defensively, we could be going through to the final. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. I'm surprised we got this far, but we have been lucky with the draws. Barcelona were the weakest team in the quarters. Bayern, though, unexpectedly, just very poor overall this whole game. We did have possession, but you can see all of our front three were fantastic. Soracho had a really good game. He's he's up for the big matches. Igor Tadebo and Neff improved. Great at the back. Audrey Zola not quite as much. Maybe Bellerin needs to play next time. But Bellerin's a little bit more attacking than Audrey Zola. And Dragovsky had a great game, as always. Kostrovli proved to be very useful in that central midfield position, 7.4. It gives us hope going away now to Bayern. We have a 2-0 lead to defend. In the other game of the semi-finals, Liverpool have beaten Man U 3-1. In this game, quite an interesting formation from Manchester United. Fernandez just off Ronaldo up front. Ronaldo's still going. 39. Stats are starting to dip in the physicals. So it could be potentially Fiorentina Liverpool in the final if results stay this way. After our games against Barcelona, we have played Torino, who we beat 4 0. We then drew Roma. We drew Calgary as well 1 1. Almada got a penalty in that game. Well, that draw has meant that the league now, it remains tight. It's always been tight this season, but. We are two points off into with a game in hand, so we need to win that game to go one point clear of them. But we have quite a good run in, except for the Zebra game in the league, which is our second last game of the season. Inter, who are our title rivals this season, their run up includes Lazio, Zebra, Milan, and Empoli, which really bodes well for us. I would expect. Possibly Zebra to nick a point, if not Lazio also. Milan can always prove to be difficult to play against. We've had quite a good record against them, but not the rest of the top four. So I will play the Slernitana game, and then we'll come back for FC Bayern. We're heading into this game, still under strength, Milankovic still out, but it's the team that got us here. So we got Dragovsky in goal, Igor Tadebo, Neff and Audrey Zola at the back. Cook Miners, Kostrovli and Zaracho midfield, Trincao, Origi and Vlavic up front. Tadebo is still suffering a little bit from fitness, but he's going to have to play, we don't have anyone else that we can bring in there. Igor could play there, but then we'd have to bring in Bragi, who's also suffering from injury issues. I don't believe Sane was in the first leg, but he's playing here on the right hand side. They have quite a lot of pace there. They're going to play really fast. So I'm going with a fluid counter here in the hopes that we can just really hit them on the break. They're going to try and come at us with everything they've got. I'm going to play Vlavic in this formation as a complete forward, but on support, just so he tries to bring in those wingers a little bit more. Just gets involved everywhere. So Tadebo runs forward to Zaracho. Back to Tadebo. Almost gets it stolen off him. Tchaikovsky tries to play ball all the way over, but you're never going to get past a Bayern defence like that. Davies runs easily down our left-hand side, plays into Muller. It's already 1-0 down, 8.5 minutes. And they're in the mid for this. They run it straight back to the centre point. Really not good enough from our defence. Davies just ran like they weren't there. Gets on the left-hand side, fires it in, but no one can get there. Audrey Zola now on the right-hand side, comes forward. Kostrovli gets near their box, fires in the ball, but again it's cleared by Bayern. Igor now on this left-hand side, all the way to the byline. The cross comes in for Igor and Kostrovli's there. It's 1-1. This counter-attacking tactic isn't something I've played before, but I felt like it was required to come here to Bayern and play counter-attacking to really come get back at their press. 23 minutes down, we still have that 2-0 buffer, but Musiala comes through the centre. He almost scores, but it hits the post. We have another chance here. Koopman from a free kick. It's a header there that gets us 2-1 up again. I'm not quite sure who it was that finished it off here. We had plenty of people around that zone. Tadebo was looks like the one that got up there. Kostrovli was also. Neffen was all fighting for it in that position. And he gets it from the rebound. At halftime, you can see we actually started to control it at the point of that second goal. We'll send them back out in the second half and hope that they can keep up this performance. Bayern, though, 
we get a corner in and all sorts of chaos there happens at the back. Nephilim looked like he panicked, kicked off Muller and it ends up in the back of our net. All he had to do here was clear it anywhere but hit off Muller and uh, well that's quite an embarrassing goal to concede. 2-2, Vavic here from the free kick into Zaracho. Zaracho, smart bit of play, gets behind her defensive line and knocks it in but it's disallowed. He must have just gone early or he's well offside. Bayern still have to score two more goals. Because of their high press, they're looking more tired than we are. But Vlavic is played his full game, I reckon. Sesko can come on for him. He's got a lot more pace anyway. Trincao can also come off. I think I'll bring on Jota instead. I thought about Almada, but it's not really the side for him. But again, it's Bayern who've got a corner. Again, they cause absolute chaos again. They almost score. They have another chance. Coleman doesn't miss this time. Back post header. Looped over the top of Dragovsky. It's 3-2 now. They need to score another one. But Adeyemi, who we've been looking at to sign, was the creator. But when they get into that position, just it's not like us for that kind of chaos that happens. I think that's the, the fact that we're suffering from a lot of injuries at the moment. And that we're really missing Milenkovic in that position. Kutmeyers with a free kick. Can he do something special here? He tries, but Neuer is up to it. Get a corner. Strovely's going to fire this one in. But it's easily cleared by Bayern. Kutmeyers. Free kick again into Nephilim, but he can't do anything. Adeyemi's got a chance here to break on us. He does so. Comes forward, it's two on two if they get anyone there. Kostrovli's completely taken out Adeyemi. It's going to be a penalty. But Dragovsky saves it. I really thought they were going to equalise there. I thought that was game over for us. Going to bring in some fresh fight in that central midfield. Try and time waste this game out because Bayern are going to have no chance if we keep pushing forward the way we are. Can we hold out now for four minutes? Two minutes? We've done it. They looked the strongest side in that second half. They did come back. I think they started to fall away towards the end. Just out of tiredness and fatigue. We just about did enough to get through. The penalty miss was the big one. I think if this had gone to extra time, Bayern would have got stronger and stronger and probably went through to the final. Instead, it's us who go to the final, quite unbelievably. The 3-2 loss here is a reversal of when Fiorentina and Bayern last played each other in 2010. Back then it was Van Bommel and Robin who scored the goals for Bayern and Vargas and Jovetic who scored for Fiorentina. So let's move on and find out who we've got in the final. It looked like it was going to be Liverpool the last time we looked. Interestingly the final's going to take place in Wembley. We got 10 million for making it through those semi-finals. Pretty important for us because we paid Vlavic a lot of money on bonuses to get him to stay at the club for another few years. That's really hitting the bottom line of the club. That's where a lot of our expenditure is going. I think he got three quarters of a million pounds for hitting his goal target. Which is a lot of money and probably not the smartest of moves. But if he can win us the final of the Champions League, then that doesn't matter. And that final is still to be decided with Liverpool still to play. Liverpool were actually beaten 2-1 in the game. Greenwood and Diaz scoring the goals there. Salah scoring away. But Liverpool go through in the end 4-3. Same as us actually in their result against Bayern. So Liverpool who have won it in the past two years are our opponents. Yet so Liverpool won this in 2021-22. Then it was Chelsea. We're up against them so that is going to be a tough game. They have Haaland who I've never actually faced in this game. And they have Mbappe. Let's have a look at what they have been lining up. So it's like they play a very similar formation to us. But they have Mbappe on the left and Haaland up front. I don't know how we're going to manage to control this front three. Yep, that's a pretty scary front three. Marcus Antonio is also in here at 23. It was a very good signing. He came from Shakhtar for only £44 million. Pounds. 13 assists, 6 goals. Nianzu? I don't know anything about him. But he came from Bayern for £41 million. So this is going to be a tough game for us. And that will be coming up. At the end of the season, first up we have Inter in the Italian Cup Final. This is the first time we've made it to the final. We've got a really good record against Inter actually, even though they are our opponents for this season to try and win the title. In terms of the title, we're back to being we're back to being one point above them and we've got a game in hand, so we've an opportunity to go four points clear. It looks like Inter actually lost their last game. Which they did. A 4-0 loss against Lazio. That's quite significant. So their form is not anywhere near as good as their form. They've got Zebra as well next. Before they play us in the cup final. 
If they lose to Zebra, we would look pretty good for winning the Italian Cup. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. This is where we're going to end this episode. So we're fighting on all fronts. Still trying to get that title again for the third time in a row. Battling in the Champions Cup final against a Liverpool side, which we don't have any expectations of beating and shouldn't have any expectations of being. That's preceded by our chance to win the Italian Cup, and already this season we've won the non-important Super Cup. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.